Welcome to Love, Lust, and Lies. I'm your host, Ken Kenyon. Thank you for joining me. Today's topic is, today's topic is, um, he or she cheated. Should I stay or should I go? This is the last day of the whole cheating infidelity series. And I wanted to just give y'all perspective on a little different perspective on it than most people have. So here's a perspective on the story that I got, this story that came about. And I wanted to tell everybody about the story. So imagine this. So imagine this story. Uh, there was a, a lady and there was a lady just, just call her Deborah. And Deborah, and this is a true story, Deborah had everything going on. She was very successful. Every Deborah grew up in an environment where they always told her that she was the golden child. She was that girl. She had that education. She was this and she was that. And everybody let her know she was this and that. Now, Deborah never really faced a lot of challenges in life. And she met a guy, his name was Michael. Now, Michael was a little bit different, come from a broken home. He was an in and out of group homes. Michael was a musician. Deborah was a corporate executive. They ended up going with each other. I think he liked her stability. She liked his wild side, his, his spontaneity and things like that. They ended up getting married. They had been married for several years. And then one day, Michael mm -hmm. just happened to be looking at Deborah's phone because they were going mm -hmm. to travel somewhere. And, um, and he looked at her phone, her, her reservations for the airline. And that's when he found out he saw some text messages from another guy that that Deborah worked with. And then um, and then he, he probed further after he saw these text messages because they were very inappropriate. He, looked, he found emails. And on a long story short, he ended up finding out that Deborah had a two-year affair with this guy, okay? Two-year affair with that who she worked with. Now, the affair, why it happened, we talked about those things yesterday. One of the reasons why it happened was what we talked about yesterday. Um, but... I don't want to go over that today, but so Michael heartbroken because a lot of times we think it's the woman y'all always who is the one that's heartbroken. But this, in this case, Michael was heartbroken and he wondered, should I stay or should I go? I built a life with this woman. I love this woman with all my heart. And this is not an easy decision. So I wanted to do after hearing that. Um, this person is not one of my clients, it's another one of my colleagues' clients. And after hearing that story, I decided that today I wanted to do an episode, Should I Stay or Should I Go? And I'm going to give you some practical things to think about when you've given up all of that. So the first thing I want you to think about is this right here, is think about everything that happens to us in life. Everything. Everything. Adversity challenges everything, devastation, there is always an equal and opposite benefit for the thing that has happened. I'll give you a crown, crown case in point. Had I not been 400 and something pounds, had I not, the doctor told me I was a diabetic, had I not done all of those things, blood pressure through the roof, I would not have made the change and made it meet all of the people, all of the lives that I've changed in that area of my life. OK, if you think about Oprah talked about um, some of the things that that she did with the molestation, it wouldn't have brought her to the place that she was. So adversity, what we can do is we decide to adversity happens to all of us. The question is, it's not what happens to us. It's what happens for us. It's our objective to look for the the opposite and equal benefit for all of the things that have happened to us. And y'all, we've all had tragedy. If you live long enough, my mama used to tell me, if you live long enough, something's going to happen to you. So from that perspective, I want to start this talk off. Do y'all remember? Okay, so I started off with this. Do y'all remember when Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce? And y'all remember when Jay-Z, because they're public figures, they're in everybody's life. And you got to think about it. That's added pressure anyway. So you got Jay-Z, Beyonce found out that he cheated. Now, Jay-Z said in an interview, he Jay-Z did some of the steps that I'm going to talk about what to know whether you should go or whether you should stay. So Jay-Z decided, I'm going to get in front of and tell everybody. Everybody's hearing about it. And there's something that Jay-Z said that stuck, that struck me. He said during an interview, he said, listen, when you look at the face of someone you love and the pain that you caused them, it makes you want to run away and hide. Now, here's a guy who's worth a billion dollars 
And I don't care how much money you work. I don't care any of that. It can't, when you hurt him, it can't take away the pain that he's caused. And it can't take away the pain that he feels because he's caused it. So today we're going to talk about, should you stay or you go? Should you go? So the first thing I want to tell you is this. I think the truth of the matter is they say 71% of the people who have experienced infidelity do stay in the relationship. Now, whether you should stay or go, I like to think this. I don't know how I would be if my wife, if my wife, uh, if I found out my wife was she, I don't know. Um, I like to think that what we have that I would like to say I would stay. I don't know. I may not. I'm just being honest because my next words, it takes courage to say I'll stay. And so from that perspective, I'm going to do the talk today. It takes courage to say, I'm going to stay and fight through it. Because there, there have been many couples who have fought through this, built their relationship better than it was before. And I'm going to show you how to do that if you're willing to do it. So, but you got to understand, courage is the key. Because it takes courage for the one betrayed. Why? The one betrayed, you have. it takes courage to say, I'm hurt. It takes courage. You have to be vulnerable and to say, I'm hurt and I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what to do with this pain that I feel. I don't know how to challenge this pain. I don't know what to do with it. It takes courage. It takes courage for the betrayer, the one, the betrayer, because when you look at the per the face of the person that you've hurt, you come face to face with your human frailties, frailties, your, your failings. You come face to face with who you are as a person because who you are has caused this pain to another person. It takes courage because if you're deciding I'm going to do the work it takes to rebuild the trust. Now the work that it takes, we're going to talk about the work that it takes to rebuild the trust because that's going to let you know whether it's worth staying or not. So the question is, should I stay or should I go? So I came up with I came up, not me, I mean, I just put my twist on everything, uh, of four ways to know whether you should stay or you should go. So the first thing is this. If you find out, once you find out that somebody has cheated and you're just in, and you're in a state of limbo, the first thing you've got to understand is this. It, it is not you. It has nothing to do with you. I told you earlier this week, any of us years ago before I married, I, I've cheated. Yes, I have. I've cheated. Okay. Um, and I'm saying back then, I did. The, the question is, it wasn't because of my girlfriend at the time, because of something she did. It was something in me. What people do. The, per the victim, the person who's been cheated on, decides to bear the burden of the infidelity. So what they say is, it must be something wrong with me. It must be something wrong with me. Maybe I'm not giving it to them enough. Maybe I'm not freaky enough. Maybe I'm not pretty enough. Maybe I'm not something enough. But the truth is, you got to realize it is not you. It is the person who did it. It is the person who did it. Because at that point, at that point years ago, you got to understand, look, look, here's the thing. Before you got to understand, it is you. It is the person who did it. It is not you. So that being said, should I stay or should I go? Here's how you know it. Number one, if the person who did it is willing to apologize and show true apathy. Now, what, you, what do I mean by true apathy? I simply mean a person, not because they got caught, but because the pain was so great and they really, really, really believed that the decision I made to do it was a bad decision. Because if a person tells you something like this, you need to get over it. It's been a month. Okay, I made a mistake. Then you need to leave. Because that person is unwilling, is, is unwilling to show true apathy. True apathy says this. True apathy. And when you apologize, you're not apologizing for getting caught. You're not apologizing for getting, you're apologizing for not only the pain you, you've caused, but the decision you've made. See, when you ask the person whether you want to stay or not in counseling, you have to ask the person, what are you apologizing for? And if they say I'm apologizing because the person got hurt, 
then it may be time for you to move on. Because the truth is, if a person is unwilling to apologize for the decision that they've made, the decision that, the, because the decision I made caused this, then I would say, it might be time to go. But if they're willing to say, you know what? The decision I've made was not a good decision. I, I apologize for the decision. I apologize for what my decision caused. I apologize because my decision affected another person's life negatively. And if that's the case, then we can move to step two. Step two. Step two simply says this. Should I stay or should I go is is step two is the person takes 100% ownership of the of what they did. Now get this. I've worked with people before who said, you know what? I mean, she wasn't giving me none. I wasn't hitting it that often. And then I said, well, and what they do is they what they do is they absolve themselves of responsibility. When you, if you're the, the betrayer, when you absolve yourself of responsibility, the other person should leave. Here's why. Because if I deflect and say, I cheated because you did this, then I am absolving myself of responsibility. And then I, that means I'm not taking true ownership. A person, should you say or go, you should go, you should stay if and work it. Use the courage to work it out. If a person says, I take full, I take 100% ownership and nobody else is to blame. Nobody else is the cause. Even if you didn't give me any, I never did this. It was my doing. It was my choice. It was everything without deflection, without deflection. If I am unwilling to take 100% ownership without deflection, then the truth of the matter is, if I'm willing to do that, then I can move down this healing process. Because the truth is, if I am not willing, if I'm not willing to take 100% responsibility for my own life, for my own decision, if I'm not willing to say, then I cannot heal this relationship. I'm just going to be honest with you, y'all. I cannot, I cannot heal, the, heal the relationship. So if they're not willing to do it, then you're not willing to heal. The third thing is this. Oh, oh, this, this the third thing. And y'all, let me tell y'all something. So, 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 so let me tell y'all something. Long story short, you know, I, I'm, I'm transparent. So years ago, like I told you, you know, I used to do what I used to do. I'm not proud of it. And I told the truth. I was, I, I did some wretched shit. Okay. Now, that being said, when I decided years ago that I decided that the woman I was with, the woman I was with was far outweighed the stuff that I was doing. And I said to myself, and me and her talked about this recently, when I made a decision that my purpose, I've used this term before, my purpose was more important than pussy. When I decided to do that, I said, I've got to act as if I was already married. I wasn't married at the time, but I said, I'm going to act as if. Now, I had already done some stuff that where my wife was checking my page all the time. So that meant there was a lack of trust in our relationship. And so I said, okay, I have to do what it takes to rebuild the trust. Okay. Even though we weren't married, I had to take the, I had to, I had to do what it takes to rebuild the trust. And what I'm going to tell you is you got to be with it. What I'm going to tell you next are the things, the steps that you have to go through to rebuild the trust. All right, here it is. Number one, you have to cut off the oxygen that fueled the other relationship. Oh, snap. Oh, wait. Let me say that again. You have to cut off the oxygen that, refueled, that fueled the other relationship. And here's what I mean by that. The truth is, y'all, if you out here, if you want the relationship to work and you got to cut off the other piece. If you're a guy, and in this case with this uh, the, the, this lady, you got to cut off any any any, any kind of uh, interaction with the person. If you work with the person, you got to move to another office, another building. You're gonna ask to be transferred something. Now maybe you can't, but you got to cut off social media. Okay, I can't follow you no more. Everything you'll lose my number. Every you got to cut off all the oxygen that fueled the relationship. Because if you don't cut off the oxygen, here's what happens. Even
even though you mean good, even the Bible talks about it. Hey, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Because what happens is, is your mind from time to time begin to wonder about the things you experience with that person. And if you don't cut off all the oxygen, it can't die. It can't die. So what you have to do is you cut off all the oxygen. You get rid of the social media accounts. You get rid of the numbers. You do all of the things necessary so that it can die. And your brain is going to tell you because it felt good while it was going on, okay? All those hormones that were released while you were sneaking around doing it. The hum y'all, there's hormones released. You, why, why do you think people jump off of buildings? You know, like not, 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 not to kill themselves, like jump out of planes. It's the rush, it's the hormones. That rush of doing it, that rush still exists. So you have to cut that off and get rid of it. Second thing you have to do is this. Oh, this, this right here. This is the part where a lot of people get upset. You have to be willing to answer any question and every question the spouse or the other partner who was cheated on, any question they have. Now, y'all, here's the problem with this. It's because, and, and let, me, let, me, let me get scientific. Let me get scientific because y'all know sometimes from time to time I get scientific. The reason why the person has the question is because every time the question comes, every time the thought comes in their mind. Because remember what I told y'all before, the mind thinks in pictures. Every time they think about the infidelity, they think about the cheating, their brain conjures up a picture. Okay, watch this. So they think about you and them about to have sex. And then all of a sudden, a picture goes into their mind about you having sex with this other person. Like this guy said, listen, every time I thought about, every time, I'm just going to keep it 100. Every time I thought about my woman being with this guy, all I thought about were her dropping her knees and sucking him off. That's what I thought about. And I could not do it because every time the picture comes, the picture is going to come. So what happens is, is the person, the, the betrayed, has a question about the picture. So they may ask you a question like, well, did you have oral sex with him? And here's what you have to do. If you're going to ever be rebuild a trust, as much as it hurts, you have to answer every question. Every question truthfully and honestly. Yes, we had oral sex. Yes, we did this. Yes, we did that. And the reason why is because the honesty about doing it will ultimately weigh bigger than the picture they see if you do it long enough. But if you're unwilling to ask questions, if, I mean, if you're unwilling to answer the question, what's going to happen is this, is they're going to, questions are going to remain. And as long as those questions remain, the pictures will keep coming back over and over and over again. And so what I'm going to say to you is you got to be willing to ask. You got to be willing to answer whatever question they ask. And the, and the thing is, however long it takes. See, when infidelity happens, what happens is this. There is a grieving process that goes into it. And see, the grieving process, it's like if our parent died or, 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 or our child died. See, the betrayed looks at that as it as the relationship died. I am grieving because this is what I thought we had. What we had is no longer. It's like my mom, when she died, I grieved that process. And so no one can tell you how long you should grieve. And that's why if a person says you should be over it by now, you should get over this by now. You should be done with this by now. And I told my wife one time years ago before we got married, and I told you, I've been through this. All this stuff, they ask, she asked me questions. I've been through this when I, years ago, y'all, I told she would ask me all these questions and I'm like, all right. And then, and I, and I, and I asked her one day and I honestly, y'all, I asked her, I said, I'll answer whatever you want me to answer. This is back then, y'all. And this was 20, 20, 23, 24 years ago, 25 years ago. I don't know how long it was, but I said, I'll answer any question you ask me. And I said, I will. And one day I asked her, and I, and I was serious, y'all, because it hurt me every time I got bring it up. Now, did it hurt me? Why well, it hurt me because she was hurt. All right. That's why it hurt me. Not because I did it and I was like, oh, I'll keep bringing it up. No, because she was hurt every time she asked. But I asked her one day and, I, and we weren't even talking about it. And I said, honey, I said, how long are you going to make? Are you going to suffer? Meaning by asking the question. Now, I'll, I'll answer and suffer as long as you want me to. Um, but I just wanted to know. 
And one day she said, I decided that I'm gonna move forward and I'm gonna be with you. And we built a relationship, you know, over the last 25 years. Um, you know, we weren't married then, but still she loved me and I loved her. Um, so I, I, I have to say this right here before I go. Understand this, and she told me, and, 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 and I tell and I tell her now, you may not be responsible for your pain. And I've said this before, but you are 100% responsible for your healing. You are 100. You didn't cause your pain. You did it, but you are responsible for your healing. If that means you got to go to somebody, a coach like me or Milani Shani, somebody who helps you with healing to help you get past it, you have to. Now, what, what, what ended up happening though what ended up happening, we ended up building a relationship that works. But what I'm saying is, if the person is unwilling to go through the whole process, then you what? Then you know what? Then you should go. And the last thing is simply this. Oh, no, this one more, one more quick thing. But let me just say this. The, per, the person who betrayed you has to be willing to be transparent. I, you know, I tell my, to this day, to this day, I have, my wife has no, I work with women all day long. My wife has no reason to believe anything because she got all my codes. She got my bank code. She got my, 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 my cell phone code. I leave my cell phone out. Y'all, I am a complete open book because I want you to understand that, that I am as transparent as you need me to be. The person has to be transparent. If they're unwilling to be completely 100% transparent, walk away. Walk away. It's going to hurt now. Yes, but it's going to hurt worse if you stay in it and it begins to metastasize like cancer. And then all of a sudden, it's just eating you up inside, eating you up inside. Mm -hmm. And you become fundamentally a different person than you were before. Because mm -hmm. what this cannot do, you cannot allow it to help you to become fundamentally a different individual. And that's what people begin doing. That's what they get into. That's what they become. And that's the thing that we don't want. And the last and most important thing, and this is the part that's going to step on some people's toes. They ain't going to like this part, but this is important too, is once you begin to go through the process of healing, doing the things, regaining the trust, you have to either go to someone else, coach, counselor, healer, someone else, and you, or even with, within yourself, and you have to discuss in an earnest way what led to it. Now, I don't mean that you made the person do it, but both of you need to know what led to it. Is it because we're not communicating anymore? Is it because we don't have sex anymore? Is it because we don't have any intimacy anymore? What led, or is it just you just selfish? Okay, that's, that's, that's a possibility too. Or because you have insecurities and you want to know if you still got it. That could be it too. But you have to once it's going, you have to discuss, you have to get on an intimate level and discuss what caused it, what caused it, what fueled it, what was the catalyst for it. Because if you never deal with the root issue of it, if you never deal with the root issue, the virus that caused it, no pun intended, but if you never deal with the virus that caused it, it can, re, it can resurface, it can cause it again. So what I'm saying is, Let's build in some immunity. And this immunity is us reconnecting, rebuilding intimacy. Now, in some cases, it works out where people get back together. And in some cases, the other person doesn't want to. They're not willing to. Then, then, then you should leave. But if there's a chance and you can be courageous enough, courageous enough to stay, to retry, to do it again, I suggest you do that. All right, y'all. That's all I have. Listen, I'm your host, Ken Canyon of Love, Lust, and Lie. Lies, lies, lies. And I appreciate you joining me, y'all. Thank you for listening. I appreciate all of you. And I am...